Hello and welcome to Mary Makes. I'm Mary and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this bow. This is a great beginner pattern because it's simple and straightforward. Um, I actually made this pattern into like a one minute YouTube short like last year and I'm just finally getting around to making a full length tutorial. So this tutorial is designed for a complete beginner. So if you are totally new to crochet, start here with this video. I'm going to show you everything you need to know from how to hold to your hook to walking you through the entire pattern. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with the materials that you're going to need. You'll notice here that I have three different bow that I made and um, the first thing you're going to need is yarn and I, I brought these three bow here to show you the difference that the yarn you choose can make. So this middle bow is the smallest. I think I used Caron Simply Soft to make this bow. Um, and because it was a finer, thinner yarn, it made a smaller bow following the same pattern. Like all of these bow have the same exact number of stitches in them, just this one is smaller. This one is the biggest bow. It was made with a uh, Red Heart Super Saver. Um, and so since Red Heart Super Saver is a thicker yarn with more volume to it, it made a bigger bow. And then finally, I think this one, I made this with uh, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. So just wanted to point out that different yarn brands can uh, make a difference. With that said, when you're picking out your yarn, for beginners, I recommend you choose anything that's medium size four yarn. So when you go to purchase yarn, um, it will have a yarn label and you should see on the label like a little picture of a yarn ball with a number in it. These numbers uh, are on a scale of one to seven with one being the thinnest lace weight yarn um, and seven being like the thickest uh, jumbo yarn. Uh, four is a great middle ground. I think this is just a good size to start working with. Um, if you want to make a gigantic bow, you can get the thickest yarn you can find um, and it'll make a bigger bow. Or if you wanted to make an even smaller one, you could go down to three, two, even one if you're into that. Um, accordingly, you're going to need a crochet hook with your yarn. I like to use a four millimeter crochet hook with size four yarn. Um, you'll also notice on this yarn label, it has like a recommended knitting needle size and a recommended crochet hook size. This yarn recommends a five and a half millimeter crochet hook, but the reason why we go down to a four millimeter is so that our stitches are smaller and closer together to prevent stuffing from coming out of our bow. Um, same here, this yarn recommends a five and a half millimeter crochet hook, but we go down to a four millimeter. So that's the first thing you'll need is white yarn. Um, you'll also need a crochet hook. Uh, next, you'll need a yarn needle. Um, I just use a blunt tip, whoops, a blunt tip yarn needle. Um, these are pretty cheap, they're handy, they don't hurt when you stab yourself, if you don't stab yourself too hard, um, and they're excellent for working with yarn. Uh, you'll also need a pair of scissors. You'll need a stitch marker. Um, I like to use these small little clover sti stitch markers that are just like a spiral, like you just use this tip here to stab it into the stitch to mark your place, but you can use like a paper clip or anything similar to that to mark your stitches. Um, you'll also want some embroidery thread. I've got some black embroidery thread here and some pink embroidery thread to um, make the mouth and the blush. This is optional. You technically don't really have to use embroidery thread. You could use yarn or whatever else you have. Um, You'll also need stuffing. Uh, I use polyester fiber fill stuffing um, just to, it's like a really nice high quality, uh, I don't know, polyester stuffing and it's like the go-to stuffing brand I feel like. You'll also need a pair of safety eyes. I'm using a pair of eight millimeter safety eyes today um, and their uh, corresponding backs. Um, 
You could use six millimeter safety eyes. It just depends on what look you're going for. This one here is made with eight millimeters. This one here is made with six millimeters. And I kind of think the bigger eyes look cuter. So, um, but that's totally up to you. Um, all of these items are purchasable uh, either online or at your local craft store, and I'll include the links to the stuff that I bought on Amazon. Um, these are affiliate links. If you purchase using my link, I do earn a commission. But all right, that's everything you need to make your bow. Let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about your yarn and your crochet hook. Um, when you get your yarn ball, if it's one of these like, I don't know, tubular balls, you can either pull from the outside of the ball. So like there is a yarn end out here that like is wrapped around the ball, or you can pull from the center of the ball. This is usually preferable as um, then you don't need to be like unwrapping your yarn from the ball. Um, and with your crochet hook, I'm a right-handed person, but you can do everything I do left-handed as well. So let's start with your dominant hand. Your dominant hand, right if you're right-handed, left if you're left-handed, is the hand that's going to be holding your hook. I like to hold my hook pencil grip like this. Um, if you also like, you can hold this like knife grip. You can hold the crochet hook like this. It doesn't really matter as long as it's comfortable for you. With your non-dominant hand, I think this is arguably more important than your dominant hand. Your non-dominant hand has a couple of jobs it needs to do. The first job is it needs, you need to have some sort of anchor point on your hand to keep the yarn from um, just like slipping through your fingers. Um, so Anyone I've ever taught to crochet um, has some sort of anchor point. Some people wrap their yarn around their pinky and then they control the tension through multiple like wraps like that. Other people wrap it around their index finger. I have like, a, I don't know, a knuckle here on my pinky that I feel like it really nicely squishes into my index finger. So this is what I use for my anchor. The next thing you're going to need is like a free finger to help hold your work. So depending on what finger you use as your anchor, maybe your middle finger or your ring finger helps you manipulate your work. Um, and then finally, you need like a feeding point. So this is how I typically hold my yarn. Uh, the anchor point is between my ring and pinky finger. Then I loop it behind my middle finger, which is helping me hold the work and hold the yarn. And then finally, I have my yarn feeding over my index finger to help me like pull on the, the yarn here to pull it past the uh, anchor point. And so, you know, when I'm crocheting, it's a very natural hand position. This is pretty much how I hold my hook uh, and yarn. Um, with that said, everybody's hands are different. What's comfortable for me is not going to be comfortable for you. So this is where I highly recommend you experiment, you change it up. You might even try wrapping your yarn a different way. Like if you need, uh, what, an, an up, a down, and an over to like make that tension for your yarn work, that's something else you can also do. So, um, yeah. That's how you hold your yarn and crochet hook. Now let's actually start making your bow. What we're going to start with is uh, we're going to start with making a magic ring, which is an adjustable slip knot. Um, the way you make a magic ring, uh, you can do, there's like a couple different methods out there on the internet. You can Google them or YouTube them. I'm going to show you what I like to do to make a magic ring. Take the dead end of your yarn in your hands and then take the live end of your yarn and wrap it so that the live end is on top of your dead end and it makes an X like this. Then with your crochet hook pointed towards the floor, go into that loop and grab your live yarn. 
Once you grab your live yarn, pull it through your loop and twist your hook up to the ceiling. And then from here, take your live yarn and you're just going to wrap it around your crochet hook and pull that through. So that makes your adjustable slip uh, knot. And I just like to untangle this uh, end here. What we do with the adjustable slip knot or magic ring is we make our first stitches into this ring and then we use this tail end to close it shut so that there is no hole in the center of our stitches. So now that we've made our magic ring, you're just gonna make six single crochet in the magic ring for round number one. So to make a single crochet, what you're gonna do is go into the hole, into your magic ring, grab your working yarn and draw up a loop. Now you'll have two loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over your hook and pull through two. So that makes one single crochet. Do this uh, five more times. So here's another one. That's my second single crochet. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So there you have it, six single crochet in the magic ring. And now I'm gonna take my dead end of my yarn and I'm gonna pull it tight. So that starts row number one. Um, I also put the stitch uh, count at the end of each row in my pattern. So you should see on the screen here, R1, uh, six single crochet in MR, MR again, that's magic ring, and the six in parentheses at the end of the line, that refers to how many stitches you should have in this round. So if you count, we'd still have six because we just made six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Going on to round number two, we're going to make six increases. An increase is two single crochets into the same stitch. So if we have six stitches here in round one and we put two stitches in each stitch, six times two, that's 12. So when you go into your work, you're going to notice you have two like kind of like a nice braid you can go through you have this front loop and this back loop i you're gonna insert your hook underneath both of them like that you're going to grab your yarn you're gonna pull it through your work now you have two on your hook you're gonna yarn over and pull through two so there's one single crochet and now we're going to go into the exact same spot to make our second single crochet, just like that. So now we have two stitches in our first stitch. That's one increase. You're gonna do that again into the next stitch. We're going to make two single crochet there, one and two. Another increase. Boop, ba, do another increase here is our fifth increase and finally here's our sixth increase so at this point this is where I would recommend you use your stitch marker um, so here's my stitch marker I'm gonna take the end of my stitch marker and mark the last stitch that I just made. This tells me where the end of my row is and it also gives me a place to double check my stitch count. So like now that I've gone here, I'm at the end of my row, I know like I should have 12 stitches in this round and we can go around and actually count like we have 12 stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 over there. All right, going on to round number three, we're gonna work one single crochet in the first stitch, 
followed by an increase in the next stitch. And you're gonna do this six times all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. So sometimes when I'm counting this, I just go like one in crease. And that helps me keep track of my like stitch count and if I've made two stitches for my increase. So that was one single crochet in the first stitch and an increase. Now we're gonna do it the second time. This is gonna be two increase. three in crease four in crease five in crease and finally six and then my last stitch here, I'm gonna take out my stitch marker in crease. So there you have it. That's round number three complete. Put your stitch marker back into your last stitch of this round. And let's go on to round number four. We're gonna follow the same pattern this time. We're gonna do two single crochet followed by an increase. So, um, I don't know if any of you are musicians out there, but whenever I'm counting this, I'll go one, two, increase, two, two, increase, three, two, increase. And um, it's just, you know, a, a, a good way to uh, count your stitches, I think. But, or if that doesn't work for you, just go one, two, in and just repeat that until you hit your stitch marker. One, two, in crease. One, two, in crease. One, two, in crease, one, two, in crease, and finally, one, two, take out your stitch marker, in crease. And put your stitch marker back into your last stitch. So there is round number uh, four completed. While we're here, I want to show you how to count your rounds. So you can see in your stitches where your rounds started and ended. So you can see here with our first circle, this was round number one. And here, where we start putting stitches on top of it, that's the start of round number two. So keeping this like point in mind, I know this is round number two, this is round number three, and finally this outer round is round number four that we just finished. All right, going on to round number five, you're gonna do three single crochet followed by an increase six times all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. So one, two, three, and increase. That was our first time. One, two, three, increase. That was our second time. One, two, three, increase third time one two three increase that was our fourth time 
one, two, three, increase, fifth time, and here's our last time, one, two, three, take out your stitch marker, increase. And there is the end of round number five. You should have 30 stitches in each in this round. Um, at the end of each round, I think it is a good idea to just quickly double check your stitch count. Just make sure you're on the right track. Um, you know, it, it always kind of sucks later on to like realize your count was off. I mean, for the bow, it's really not a big deal if you make a mistake since it's just round, um, and if, especially if it's your first time too, I would just say keep going, finish your bow, and then make another one. Make like five. <laughs> For round number six, now we're going to do four single crochet followed by an increase for a total of 36 stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, increase one two three four increase one two three four in Increase one, two, three, four, in crease one, two, three, four, in crease. And last repeat, one, two, three, four, take out your stitch marker, in, crease, and put your stitch marker back in the final stitch. That concludes round uh, number six. You should have 36 stitches in your project now. For round seven through 12, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Um, and round seven through 12, that means you do round seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. That's six rounds. So it's not like, you know, 12 minus seven, oh, that's five. You, you have to include round number seven as well. Um, so. It's pretty simple from here. I'll do round seven with you, um, but then I'll let you go to uh, do round number 12 and I'll come back to film after that. So round number seven, you don't even have to count. Like you could sit here and count one, two, three, all the way to 36. But since you have this stitch marker here, I wouldn't bother with that. Just, I don't know, watch some TV, <laughs> relax. You're just repeating the same motion all the way around. It's at this point where you're not like increasing that you really don't have to count. <laughs> but you do have to still keep track of what row you are on. I can't tell you how many times I've made a project and I, I've gone to like round 15 or something when I was only supposed to go to round 12. Ugh, counting is hard but it's okay. The good news is that crocheting can be undone really easily, or if you don't want to undo it, your materials are like pretty cheap. Like a ball of yarn can't be more than, even if you get like a super fancy, nice ball of yarn that's like a high quality animal fiber, it's not going to be that too expensive. Okay, with that said, there are some like really expensive balls of yarn out there, but like for what we buy and what we use, you know, five bucks, six bucks a ball of yarn. 
And I think that's what I love about crocheting. It's like such a financially accessible hobby. And, and personally, I think it's a lot of fun too. So I, I hope you're having a good time. <laughs> so there is round number seven complete. All I did was put one single crochet in each stitch and I still have 36 stitches in this round. Go ahead and finish rounds eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and I'll meet you back here. All right, I've just completed round number 12. Um, and if you lost count, that's okay. Just remember that when you're counting your rows, I recommend looking for where round number two started and then just counting your rows just to the side of that. So this was round number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So with round seven through twelve completed, let's go on to round number thirteen. In round number thirteen, we're going to be decreasing our stitches. So right now we have thirty-six stitches all the way around. We're going to be working six decreases, so 36 minus 6 is 30. At the end of round 13, you're going to end up with 30 total stitches. And a decrease turns two stitches into one stitch for the next round. So I'll show you how to make a decrease in this round. To start row number 13, go ahead and make four single crochet, just like normal. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to be making a decrease. So with a decrease, we're going to be turning these next two stitches here into one stitch. Um, so one way of making a decrease is simply to go into the first loop, drop a, uh, drop a loop, go into the second stitch, draw up a loop, and now you have three stitches, yarn over and pull through three. That is what's called, I think, just a classic decrease. It's just a regular old decrease. What I recommend for amigurumi is to do an invisible decrease, which is where you go into just the front loop of your first stitch, and then just the front loop of your next stitch, and then you draw up a loop. And now with only two on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. This looks a lot more like a single crochet than um, the other stitch that we just made. Um, so there you have it. That's an invisible decrease. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four single crochet. And then let's do that invisible decrease again. Insert your hook into the first front loop and then insert your hook into the next front loop, draw up a loop, two on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. I'll do our third repeat now. One, two, three, and four. One more invisible decrease here. Come in from the bottom to the top Grab the first front loop, grab your second front loop, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And we'll do that three more times. So one, two, three, and four. Here's our next decrease. I'm going to do it again. Here's our fifth repeat. One, two, three, four, invisible decrease. And finally, our last repeat, one, two, three, four, and take out your stitch marker, decrease. And go ahead and now put back in your stitch marker. That is round 13 completed. You should have 30 stitches in the round. Um, oh, and I should have also mentioned that 
for beginners, I find that some beginners get confused with which way is the right side of your work. And this, when you're crocheting in the round, the, the side where you can see your stitches being made, that is the outside of your work. So make your work turned out so that you're working um, like on the outside of your bowl. Don't, don't do it so that you're like working on the inside of your bowl like this. Um, I mean, it's all a matter of personal preference, you know, like if you like the way the inside looks, but traditionally this, this outside part is the right side of your work. Going on to round number 14, we're going to be making another round of decreases. So um, this time we're gonna do three single crochet followed by a decrease all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. Um, as we're getting started with round 14, I just wanna help you look at your work. Uh, just be careful not to work in this stitch. Because we grab the front loops, um, sometimes I notice a common mistake is for beginners to work into this stitch. You, you don't want to work into the stitch, like you can even see here this front loop is being pulled up because we've already worked into it. Work into the next stitch over here. So that's where you want to start. So here's one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, and then now we decrease doing the invisible decrease again. So that was our first repeat, and we're gonna do this all the way around. One, two, three, and decrease. One, two, three, and decrease. One, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease, and here's our last repeat, one, two, three, take out your stitch marker, decrease, whoops, oh, and that's another common mistake that beginners will do. Uh, let me just put back in my stitch marker before I talk about it. So yarn is, you'll notice here, it's, it's a couple of fibers spun together. So like if you, uh, I don't know, like unwind your yarn, you can see it's made up of multiple like fibers here. A common mistake that beginners make is they accidentally split their yarn. So they they accidentally like stab into the center of your yarn like that. You never want to do that. This is going to cause, I don't know, weird knots. It's going to make it difficult to undo your work. Make sure you're always grabbing your entire strand of yarn and not stabbing it through the center. Anyways, at this point now, I want you to make your uh, loop here big and put down your crochet hook. We are going to pause to uh, attach our eyes and embroider on our mouth. So keeping your stitch marker or like where your row begin and end is in the back, uh, go to the front. This is where we're going to place our eyes and the, the, where, the location you want to place it is between rows 9 and 10, leaving about 5 stitches in between. So I just come down here to the bottom, I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I'm just going to insert my eye somewhere, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle. And then... I am going to count from this eye five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put my eye in the next stitch over. So I'm leaving five stitches in between my eyes. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you're gonna want to uh, 
attach your backs to the eyes. A quick note about safety eyes, they are not technically safe, even though they are called safety eyes. Um, they can be a choking hazard. Excessive, uh, I don't know, chewing, sucking, and pulling can cause these eyes to pop out. I'm going to show you a quick trick for making sure these eyes don't uh, pop out. Um, take a lighter uh, and melt down the end and squish it down. So I'm going to show you here. I just melt down the end of the eye post there. And then I poke it, the plastic down. So now the plastic has been smoothed into like a stub. So now this piece is never coming out unless something like crazy happened. Doing it to the other eye. This is completely optional, but I think it makes your eyes a lot more secure. And I saw this tip like on, um, on Facebook or Instagram or something. So there you go, melting the back posts of your eyeballs down. Next, we wanna go ahead and embroider on the mouth. I'm just gonna cut myself a short piece of embroidery thread here. You don't really need a ton to do. I'm going to thread my needle with it and with the mouth we're going to make a small little V in between the two eyeballs. So when we counted one, two, three, four, five, the stitches are going to, the or sorry, the embroidery thread is going to go in stitches two and four. I like to come in from the back, coming out of that second hole there between the eyes. Then I like to go down into stitch number four and up in the stitch in between one row down. And so now we've got this like loop here. Now I'm going to take my yarn needle and go through the loop and then back into this same hole. And so this makes a cute little mouth there. And since we have our work, like we're still able to access the inside of your work, it's really easy to come in here and secure the ends. Like I just tie a dead knot here. And then if you like, you can also trim off the excess thread and everything will stay inside your bow. So there it is. We could also actually embroider on the blush right now too. Why not? Let's do it. Take a length of your pink, uh, pink yarn or embroidery thread, thread your needle, and then with the blush, again, I'm coming through from the inside. I'm going to come out just to the bottom and to the side of one of the eyes. Wow, I cut myself maybe too long of a piece of thread. That's okay. And I'm just going to go into the next yarn or next hole over. And I'm just going to like loop this through several times, maybe like five times. So that's two, three, four, and then five. On that fifth time, I'm going to use my needle to come up on the other side of my eye. And I'm going to count to five again. There's one, two, three, four, and then, yeah, five. Since I'm using embroidery thread, I am doing like more repeats. Um, but if you're using like pink yarn, you might only have to do one or two. And then again, since I have access to the inside, I'm just going to tie a quick dead knot in here to secure my uh, embroidery thread ends. And I'm going to cut off the excess. You could leave the, the, uh, the excess just inside here as stuffing, 
but because the yarn is white, like especially with the black yarn end, I just want to make sure that you don't like see the black yarn end through, which like, which you don't. So I probably didn't need to actually cut those ends. <laughs> So now that we're done attaching our eyes and embroidering on our mouth and blush, let's continue crocheting and finishing this off. So we just finished round 14, let's go on to round 15. With round 15, you're just gonna work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. Um, this round here, I think, helps shape the top of your bow more by not making it close up so quickly. It gives it just a little bit of a, uh, a taper. Um, and again, since I'm using a stitch marker, I'm not actually counting my stitches here because I know once I hit the stitch marker, that'll be 24 <laughs> stitches. <laughs> All right, I'm at the last stitch. I'm removing my stitch marker, making my last single crochet. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in. Going on to round number 16, we're gonna work two single crochet, one, two, followed by a decrease. There's my decrease. Six times all the way around, for a total of 18 stitches. So here's my second repeat. One, two, decrease. One, two, decrease. That was my third repeat. One, two, decrease. That was the fourth time. One, two, decrease, and here is, that was the fifth time, and here is the last time. One, two, take out your stitch marker, decrease, and put your stitch marker back in. For the last two rounds of this bow, you're just going to work one single crochet in each each uh, stitch. And this just gives your bow like a little bit of a top here. So um, two rounds, round 17 and 18, all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. Uh, do it twice and it won't take me too long. So I'll just stay here and record myself doing this part with you. Once you get to the point where like making single crochets is automatic for you, then I think, or just making stitches in general is automatic for you, then I think that's when crocheting becomes really fun. So any of you beginners watching this, I, I hope you don't feel like discouraged or anything like watching me just talk and crochet. Like it is really fun and it is really worth um, taking the time to make it so that this this just becomes muscle memory for you, just like becomes second nature. Uh, I just finished round 17. Here's round 18. And while we're chatting here, um, it helps me out a lot. If, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe for more videos. It helps the YouTube alg algorithm. And let me know how your bow went. Um, I want to hear from you, like, was how was this video, too? I'd love to hear any feedback on how my teaching is. Um, there's always room for improvement. And, like, maybe um, I could go slower, whatever you need me to explain better. Um, so let me know. And here we are. I'm at the last stitch of round number 18. I'm going to take out my stitch marker, make my last stitch. And now we're done. To fasten off, what you're going to do 
is we're going to form a slip stitch. A slip stitch is where you insert your hook into the next stitch, you drop a loop, and then you pull that loop through your existing loop. So it kind of just like, I don't know, I don't know why it's called a slip stitch, but it just slips through. And then I would cut off leaving like a small tail for sewing and just go ahead and pull that tail through. So there is your uh, crocheted part of bow done. Let's work on assembling it together now. Take your stuffing and fill it up. Um, I don't have like an exact gram of how much stuffing you should use. Um, just feel for it how squishy or how firm you would like your bow to be. I kind of like my bow to be um, kind of on the firm side is typically where I land on like the stuffing spectrum. <laughs> Do -do. I'm gonna add even more stuffing. <laughs> oh, what is that? Green fluff. And then I wouldn't stuff it, like don't stuff it all the way to the top here because what we're going to do is we're going to pinch the top and sew it together in like this plus sign shape. And, um, and so you don't want any stuffing in there. You just want stuffing from the bottom to like, I don't know, three rows from the top. I'm pretty happy with how much I stuffed my bow. So now taking this yarn end, I'm going to thread my yarn needle. Um, a simple way to thread your yarn needle if you're having trouble is to take your needle, push it against your yarn, and that pinches it into a really small bit, and then take your fingers and just guide it through your needle. Uh, now we're going to sew. I recommend taking this yarn end, going down through the next stitch, like so. And I even go through part of the stitch down here like that. I mean, there's no there's no right way to sew it together. You, you, you just do what you like. And um, once I get here, I've moved my yarn end from the very top of my bow down a stitch. I'm going to go down here and I'm just gonna go like straight across. And from here, I'm going to now start pinching it shut. So I've gone straight across. I'm going to go over a stitch, but I'm going to go over here to the side, back down this other side, and across the way. So like I've made a plus sign on the inside. Then I'm going to go back down and back across, and that just pinches it shut. Oh, I still need to get this edge here. There we go. And you can just go a couple more rounds, just go in a circle, whoops, picking up each uh, corner of your plus sign, so to speak. And I'm using like the top two rows to sew this together. So that the pinch occurs like a little lower down. Once you're happy with how your bow looks, what I do to fasten it off is I do like a, um, just like a knot, not nothing fancy. Um, from where my yarn is coming out, um, actually I'll go over here. Maybe you can see it better over here. From where my yarn is coming out, I'm going to go into an adjacent hole and come out where my yarn is coming out. And then I'm going to poke my needle through this loop and that makes a knot. And I'm just going to do that twice. Call it good there. That will secure the yarn end. And then I'm going to take this yarn, send it back through my work and out somewhere else. And if you really want to secure it some more, um, you can even like tie, oops, that knot came out too far. You can tie some knots in your yarn uh, out here. 
and then when you stab your yarn back into your bow those knots will stay inside and make it hard to tug the yarn end out and then I will usually bury my yarn end but you can also just cut it off so ta-da there you have it here is your completed bow oh I hope you love it I hope you find this bow super cute and super easy to make um, if this was your first time crocheting congratulations I hope it went well and even if it didn't you need to practice anything you want to get good at so just go and make like a dozen more bow <laughs> um yay we did it all right thank you so much for crocheting this bow with me i hope you enjoyed this um if you like this tutorial please remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this and if you want to support my work please buy me a coffee the link is below in the description uh thank you so much for watching and have a great day Bye.